Wow. Okay. All right, guys, welcome back to another uh, patch review here, tier list, whatever you want to call it. I do these at the start of each week, and today we're going to be looking at the top five champions to escape low elo in the mid lane. So this is going to be adjusted to look at gold elo specifically. I don't think it makes sense to look at champions above that, even though they could be performing better because um, there's a lot of micro and macro that goes into playing champions in higher elo brackets. So I think if we just focus on gold elo, it's going to give you champions that are easy to play, easy to pilot, and you can kind of just log on after a few few games and get the hang of them week to week and still have really good success so again we're going to do these each week i also will try and post some gameplay commentary for each of these top five champions if i can so that you guys can watch those videos as well and get an idea of the um of the play style and mechanics and, and how to execute and win some games on these champions so without further ado let's look at our top mid lane champion uh this week which is going to be really in soul he's sitting at pretty much a 54 percent win rate really really strong right now it's utilized the arcane comet uh, rune page here that you see on screen with the rylice crystal scepter rush item it works really well in his kit um, just helps with him landing all of his abilities if you can slow the enemy champions down and, and just keeps him a little bit safer as well um, the one ban out here fizz that, that's the only thing you need to worry about everybody else you pretty much have a 50 percent win rate at at worst and means that you can win based on skill after you get a few games or even just play safe and scale out into the mid and late game i don't think there's any problem with doing that um, with the game state right now a lot of low elo games go past 30 minutes anyway so that's also why really in soul is so strong right now skill priority pick up e first you can use that in lane to poke and grab some last hits and start stacking some stardust right away and then after that you're going to max q then e then w starting items doran's ring two pots rush that rylice crystal scepter pick up your pair of sork shoes and then round out the core build with leandry's torment Okay, second best champion you can play this week for some free elo and to hopefully escape gold um, and get the platinum would be Brand. So Brand's really, really strong. I think he's got an easy to execute kit. You'll always almost top the charts damage wise every single game when you play this champion. So it's just really, really good. You could have a bad laning phase. Mid game, you press R, you're still gonna deal a bunch of damage. So um, Comet, room page for him as well. It just seems to be really strong for most mages right now. The rush item for him is gonna be Landry's Torment. So um, Suffering is just gonna add a little bit of extra when you land your R and uh, and deal some extra damage in the torment as well. I mean, dealing damage with abilities causes an enemy to burn, so you can have two burning aspects because a lot of uh, Brand's abilities burn too. So it just stacks up to a lot of damage, which makes Brand so strong right now. His weakest matchup is actually Zerath. Um, I don't think you'll play too many Zeraths, but pretty much after that, everybody else is at worst about a 50% win rate. So if you're going to ban someone and you do hate Zerath, ban him. But other than that, whoever you don't like playing against based on your experience you can ban he doesn't really have any weak matchups right now skill priority pick a w first max that out as well and then you're going to max out e and then q last uh starting items doran's ring and pots again pretty standard for a mage here leander's torment rush sork shoes and then you actually round out the build with the crystal scepter Nafiri, our, our AD champion, actually, out of the top five uh, for this week. You're going to make sure you play her if you want um, a little bit more aggressive laning pre-6. You want to maybe snowball, fight with your jungler, leave lane, um, have a bigger impact, and just general playmaking. Like, AD assassins generally have the ability to hopefully make something happen at level 3 or even earlier if you want to use Flash at Ignite. So, she is going to be your AD assassin option in this week's top five uh inspiration here tree with the first strike just to make sure you can stack that gold and try and snowball even harder and then the eclipse rush eclipse is really strong item right now um so make sure you build it. it it lets you jump in and get a little bit of a shield there um and just hopefully win trades really really hard summoner spells are interesting the highest win rate is a teleport and flash i guess you can use this still if you want to have some good tempo or teleport to other lanes um, in the mid game and hopefully pick up some kills and side lanes but honestly i'd recommend actually just going flash ignite so you can learn to snowball really really hard with this champion in the lower elos pick up a bunch of kills and start to take over games toughest matchups for her is actually swain and he's next in this list so he's a really strong champion right now i would just ban out swain 
Diana, Bran, Nico are tougher for you, but I don't think it's anything that you just can't safely lane against and then leave lane and start to roam or play with your jungler and, and fight in skirmishes and pick up kills that way. Skill priority for Nefuri, if you haven't played her, you want to max out Q first, then E, and then W last. And starting items here, Long Sword and Refillable Potion is the highest win rate. Again, I would adjust this personally to go Doran's Blade and, uh, and a Pot. I think it's just a little bit safer with the starting stats that you get, unless you're very experienced on this champion and you want to try and stomp through your, your low elo opponents and then rush the Eclipse, follow that up with the Ionian Boots of Lucidity for the um, Ida, or sorry, Ability Haste, and then round out the build with a Profane Hydra. Okay, he made his appearance here in the fourth spot this week. We've got Swain. He's at an almost 53% win rate. He's really strong right now. You want to rush um, the Malignance item, and you're going to pair that up with a Conqueror Rune Page. He's actually utilizing Summoner Spells of Flash and Ghost. Ghost is really good with his ultimate. lets you stick on your opponents a little bit easier um, and, and be that kind of really fear champion once he hits level six and he has that ability off cooldown he's got a couple tough matchups but honestly nobody plays cassiopeia and rise i think their play rates are super low so i would ban either anivia or aurelian soul here if you hate one of them more um personally i would probably just ban aurelian soul because he's our best champion this week and you want to make sure you take him out of the hands of an enemy opponent so i would ban him out skill priority pick up e first so you have that uh, ability to start uh, poking with a little bit of a snag and grab there and all, and start stacking up some health if you can and then you're going to max out q w and e last and then starting items dorn's ring pots rush the malignants sork shoes and again you guessed it a Rylai's crystal scepter this seems to be such a strong item right now for any kind of mid-ranged mage that wants to fight and continue to deal damage so um yeah it's going to be another pickup again here for swain and last but uh, not least in terms of like almost again a 53 percent win rate we have a nivia mid she's got an interesting room page here with domination electrocute that's running really good for her and then you're going to rush that rod of ages build hopefully scaling up into the mid game and being a little bit tankier she's going to be one of the tankier options you can play on this list so that you have some survivability even if you do get jumped on and of course with her passive with the egg even if you happen to die there's a bit of forgiveness there with a the second life summoner spells are a bit interesting to me here with ignite and flash i don't have a problem with that but if you're new to anivia and you're going to play a little bit more of a passive lane phase where you want to scale up and get to level six before you really start to deal a bunch of damage and and fight i would maybe go teleport here um, it just gives you a little bit of a better forgiveness in lane and keep, you can keep your tempo up if you take a really bad trade or you mess up or you need to go back and, and buy an item like your tier, um, which we're going to talk about in a second. So tough matchups, Asol, just ban him. That's your number one ban this patch um, if you're not playing him. And then skill priority with Anivia, pick up Q first, max out E, then Q, then W last. Star items, again, pretty standard here. The core items, you're rushing Rod of Ages, but make sure on your first back you spend 400 gold to pick up your tier because you're actually rounding out your core build with Archangel's staff. So that's your core build with Anivia. That's our top five champions this week. I'm gonna try and post some gameplay commentary if I can for maybe one or all of these champions, depending on timing here, so that you guys can watch and follow along and see how OP these champions are this week. And if you don't have an idea of how to play them, you can maybe watch a 20 minute video and get a pretty good understanding of how to play them at a basic level. So hopefully you guys enjoyed the video. I will catch you again next week for our updated top five champions to climb out of low elo.